welcome to the course on design of power electronic converters. Today we will begin with the module of uh, snubber design. So first of all let us see what is the snubber and what role does it play in power electronic circuits. Before discussing snubbers we should know what are the different parasitics that play a role in a power electronic circuit. For that I have taken the example of uh, edge bridge converter. So now this is uh, the converter that uh, we had analyzed and uh, this is what whatever we had analyzed was uh, an ideal circuit. The switches were ideal, all these uh, conductors, uh, wires which were connecting the different elements in the uh, power electronic circuit they were also ideal. But uh, when you are going to realize it, when you will be practically implementing it either you will be using a PCB or you may be using a bus bar structure to connect all these uh, different different devices and your uh, loads and uh, with the source. So at that time the wires are not going to be ideal, they will have their parasitics associated with them. So uh, this line which is uh, being shown as a straight line and there is an ideal line, it is uh, no resistance, no inductance, nothing associated with it, that is not what it is going to be. So what uh, we will be having here is that you uh, will have some parasitic inductance over here and also some resistances uh, and then here also some inductor like, like that, so resistance, parasitic inductance all throughout the circuit we will be having it. Um, so then they definitely will have uh, their effect and uh, that effect is usually in terms of some spikes in voltages and currents. So what are the different parasitics? So one parasitic I already told you is the uh, resistance, parasitic resistance and your parasitic inductance if we call it as RS and your LP. So uh, this is, let us uh, give it the name RP here, RP and LP associated with your bus bar structures or your PCB traces. Then further if you have seen a PCB then there is usually what you have is a dielectric medium. So this is your dielectric medium which is actually the board, the PCB board and on both sides of it you will be having some uh, traces. So let us say this is your uh, upper trace. And here below you have the lower trace. So if we will let us say this is a double sided two sided PCB. So uh, then if you cut it, so the here you this is your bottom layer. And this upper one is your top layer. So when they will be having the tracks or the traces, and different tracks pass uh, through uh, these different sides of the PCB. So they will have different voltages also on them and that means you have a dielectric medium and different voltages across them and so that is like a formation of a capacitance. So this is not only true for your when uh, traces are on both the sides of uh, the dielectric medium if you have two parallel conductors they will or they may also have some capacitance if the voltages are different but that usually is going to be much lesser. This is a, a source of, uh, of relatively uh, important or significant capacitance, parasitic capacitance. So then you know, we will be also having parasitic capacitance uh, CP associated with your bus bar and uh, PCB traces. So further if you recall 
Then uh, when we studied transistors, IGBTs and MOSFETs, we said that there is parasitic capacitance between uh, gate to drain, gate to source and also between drain and source. So, they also are going to play a role in the circuit performance and uh, then that also when we analyzed uh, the ideal circuit we did not take into account, but they will have their own uh, effect which will be uh, deviating from the uh, ideal waveform that we have uh, studied. Further another source of uh, cap uh, parasitic capacitance is this uh, junction capacitance of the diode. So, if, if you um, recall that also we had uh, discussed, uh, we had seen this that here whatever the junction is formed, so you will be having this junction capacitance. We saw that in the data sheet of the diodes. So, those junction capacitances, they also are one source of these parasitic elements. So, all these are uh, they all these they play a role in the uh, turning on and turning off uh, uh, the waveform shape that we get ok and they actually lead to some sort of spikes and ringing in the power electronic circuit. So, that is what uh, is um, something we do not want about parasitics you cannot get rid of it 100 percent they are there you can try to minimize them. We can have a very good PCB layout, we can have a very perfect bus bar structure, uh, very compact design so that your uh, stray inductances and resistances are very small, but they will be there, we cannot eliminate them. And so their effect will also be seen in the uh, waveforms of uh, different components in the circuit. So, um, now uh, what is the effect? Let us see that. So, to some extent we had discussed this uh, when we discussed uh, your uh, the turn on and turn off characteristics of uh, the devices of diodes and MOSFETs and IGBTs. Now, this is uh, you have to recall this is the characteristics switching characteristics of the diode. We had seen this uh, turn on characteristics and then the turn off. And at that time I had told you it is the turn off which is more a problem than your turn on. And uh, here at turn off of the diode what happens is that you have this uh, reverse recovery current ok. So, this is your reverse recovery current. And this reverse recovery current uh, when it uh, reaches up to here uh, almost to its uh, peak value and that is the time when your voltage starts to build up across the diode till then the voltage is almost equal to the on state voltage drop. And it increases and it, uh, it has a shoot through it is an overshoot and that is the spike and this spike is uh, because of the parasitics that are present because of the stray inductances that are there. So, if we have a higher stray inductances in the power electronic circuit the way you have designed it then it will lead to higher spikes. So, when I had explained you I had just shown you like this kind of a just a spike coming and then just reducing, but uh, in reality it is not uh, it, it may not be like this it, it is usually in the form of some ringing phenomena that uh, you will observe. And finally, the voltage settles down to whatever the device is supposed to block ok. And further I had told you that whenever your IGBT or MOSFET turns on at that time it is the diode which is turning off and the effect of diode turn off is more than the devices turn uh, the IGBT or, or the MOSFETs turn on. So, it is usually the turn off which is uh, a problem and which has to be considered. So, that is why here in this course also we will be discussing about turn off snubbers rather than turn on snubbers. Now, to understand it further, uh, 
let us take this circuit. So, uh, this circuit is um, here uh, we are observing the switching of this device. This can be an IGPT or MOSFET or any uh, transistor. And uh, then we have got the freewheeling diode. So, here uh, this is your uh, load which is represented as a current source. And so, when this uh, device turns on at that time the current flows through this uh, switch and when the device turns off at that time the current free wheels through this diode. So, it free wheels like this or it flows through this switch. Now, this one that I have shown this is the parasitic inductance. So, let us call it LP, this is the parasitic inductance LP. Then uh, we have uh, capacitances uh, associated, parasitic capacitances associated with the switch and so uh, we can uh, give it the name uh, CP, so this is your parasitic capacitance. And further you will be also having some parasitic resistance, so let us call it as RP. So, what you see? is what is forming here is an RLC circuit. So, when we have the turn off of the device, uh, so at that time the device was uh, initially carrying this current IL and when the turn off process begins if you recall then what we had said first the voltage builds up. So, first the voltage builds up, but at that time there is no change in the current that the device is carrying here. And this is um, also called as the rise time, the voltage rise time. After that rise time, the voltage when it has almost to reach to the value which is which it is supposed to block, at that time this current starts to fall, this is your fall time. And during this time is when you have this voltage spike coming up. So, you will have this uh, overshoot in the voltage and since this is an RLC circuit, you may have an under damping or an over damping or a critically damped phenomena. Uh, you have studied RLC circuits uh, before in these three um, under damping, over damping or critically damped case happens in your RLC circuit is depending on the values of R, L and C. Now, usually if your R is less then that is an underdamped case and which is what uh, is going to be this effect of R is will be usually smaller than the effect of this L and C. So, corresponding to the natural frequency associated with your L and C, you will have the ringing frequency and uh, so this kind of a ringing phenomena is what you will be observing and uh, there will be a spike that will be uh, that uh, voltage spike that you are going to observe and this will be your ringing frequency whatever is the time periods associated with this. or you can call that as the natural frequency uh, what it is usually termed as. So, usually this frequency is very high and so when you observe in an oscilloscope what you will be observing is, is like a spike wave for, is a spike and not um, uh, these ringings unless you zoom it. So, what you will be observing in your oscilloscope is, is something like this kind of a voltage uh, waveform. So, that is that your voltage spike is what will be observed and this is the off time period of the device. So, now as we saw that uh, this is an RLC circuit that gets formed because of the parasitics and these spikes are unwanted in the voltage and we want to get rid of it because if the spike voltages may, if it becomes too high then that may damage the devices. So, of course, to reduce the spike one is that uh, try to reduce all the parasitics, but as I told you, you cannot do, you, uh, do it beyond a certain extent. We cannot eliminate them, but we can reduce them. 
So, further uh, what is the solution? What could we do to protect the devices against these over voltages produced by the spikes? So, since this is an RLC circuit, if we change the values of uh, R and C, then another different RLC gets formed and then that is going to affect the RLC spike voltage and the ringing phenomena that is going to happen. So, let us say if you are going to add this R and C which is your RC snubber across the device. So, the, this RLC circuit that was getting formed those elements are different and so the uh, ringing frequency and your uh, spike voltage that you will be observing that also will be different. So, what I want to say is that that without snubber let us say this was what was the shape of the waveform that you were getting. So, without snubbers and uh, with snubbers if you uh, properly choose the values of uh, R and C this is what you may be observing the voltage across the device. Okay, so, this is your uh, VSW. So, this is uh, voltage across the device. So, these are your VSW waveforms. So, this is the change that you can bring by use of uh, these snubbers. You basically use different R and C values, you affect the RLC circuit that is getting formed, and so you change the spike voltage. So, this is one simple way of using RC snubbers. These are very widely used. RC number is uh, most widely used number in power electronic converters. Another uh, snub type of snubber which is used is your RCD snubber. So, here uh, while charging the capacitor you actually you are charging it uh, through this diode DS and when you are discharging you will be discharging it through this uh, RS resistor. So, that is, a, is again an RLC uh, circuit is uh, the elements are getting affected and you will have a different ringing and different spike voltage coming up. Uh, but this has uh, certain benefits so over your simple RC uh, snubber. So, this is also another type of turn off snubber which is very widely used. So, um, in this course as I told you we will be discussing RC snubbers and RCD snubbers that are two different types of turn off snubbers which are very widely used. We are not going to discuss turn on snubbers although they also exist uh, you can go through the literature on turn on snubbers, but uh, mostly they are not that much uh, used in practice as compared to your turn off snubbers. Apart from your just this usual uh, type of adding RC and uh, RCD or um, L in case of turn on snubbers, uh, there are other types of snubbers also. Uh, some type of circuit can uh, other type of circuit can also be added uh, which can act as snubbers. So, those are also there uh, uh, if you wish you can also uh, read through them after going through these lectures. But the RC and RCD are the simplest ones turn off snubbers which are very widely used. Now, uh, what uh, are the jobs that the snubber can perform? First is of course, this uh, spike reduction that um, we just saw. Then further the next thing that it can do is limit the dV by dt and di by dt. So, what uh, we mean by that is uh, this is um, your rise in the voltage is getting affected. So, basically your dV by dt is going to be getting affected by your snubber. So, if your dV by dt is getting affected the uh, rate of change of voltage is getting affected. So, obviously your rate of change of currents will also can then be affected by snubbers. So, it uh, changes the dV by dt and di by dt and you can design it such that um, you can limit it to the extent that is required for your uh, converter. So, uh, further it uh, shapes the turn on and turn off to keep uh, within a safe operating area. So, this is your uh, the turn off processes that uh, uh, we had seen your turn on this one is the turn on and this is the turn off. So, when you add these uh, RC or RCD's number, so obviously this uh, trajectory 
is uh, going to get affected, the slopes are getting affected and so uh, the trajectory it follows uh, during your uh, turn on and your turn off uh, that is going to get affected. So, that means uh, this which was supposed to lie within your SOA, we, if as we are shaping it we can ensure that it is inside this safe operating area while turning on and turning off with the help of proper snubber design. So, that is what uh, uh, is one of the jobs which can be performed by snubbers, I mean basically snubbers can help you in doing that shape turn on and turn off to keep within as uh, the safe operating area. Then next uh, is your transfer power dissipation from uh, switch to resistor. So, when we are having this switch and uh, then you are let us say adding an RC snubber over here. So, some of the current uh, which was flowing through the device is now going to get transferred to the snubber. So, whatever was the loss that was earlier happening in the switch will now be transferred uh, to uh, this uh, snubber. Okay. So, uh, you are basically reducing the stress on the device. So, your transfer power dissipation from switch to resistor means resistor means this snubber resistor that uh, is possible with the help of snubber. Then uh, uh, that is going to affect the total losses due to switching. So, earlier when you did not have any snubber all the losses was happening because of the switching of the device, the turn on and turn off of the device. Now, uh, as uh, some of the currents uh, are transferred to the snubber during turn on and turn off. So, uh, this device losses, switching losses are changed and further some more losses are going to get added in the resistor. So, the sum of uh, these two we would like uh, it to be lesser than uh, originally what it was without snubbers. Okay. With the proper snubber design it should be possible. So, your total losses during switching is affected by adding snubbers and we obviously design it such that uh, so that the total losses are lesser than without snubbers. Then uh, another is reduce EMI by damping voltage and current ringing. Now, you might have heard this term electromagnetic interference, uh, we will be discussing more about it later on in the course. Uh, but uh, the major source of electromagnetic interference are these spikes and uh, this basically this turn on and turn off process when it uh, uh, the voltage builds up or the current builds up or the current falls and the voltage falls at that time there is a uh, uh, very fast it is changing and uh, there uh, the, uh, the frequencies associated with them can be very high and may fall in the range where uh, your electromagnetic interference uh, can happen with other electronic devices in the vicinity. So, uh, as we reduce this dv by dt and spikes with the help of snubber, so to some extent uh, we can reduce the EMI with the help of snubbers. I am not saying that its number is a great solution for reducing EMI, but it definitely affects the EMI to certain extent. So, what are the key points of uh, this lecture? Uh, what we discussed here is that, that there are different parasitic elements present in power electronic circuits and uh, they lead to spikes in uh, switch voltages and that may damage the device. So, to reduce that we use uh, snubbers. And uh, the widely used uh, turn off snubbers are RC snubbers and RCD snubbers. Thank you.